This episode of Cinema Jaws is brought to you by Backblaze. Get unlimited computer backup for Macs or PCs for just six bucks a month. Backup documents, music, photos, videos, drawings, podcasts, projects, all of your data. Restore, restore files anywhere you have internet, and even if you are off the grid, they can overnight you a hard drive with your backup on it. Over 40 billion files restored. Get yourself a free, fully featured trial at backblaze.com slash cpc. Please make sure you visit that link, backblaze.com slash cpc, so they know where you came from and continue to support this show. Go there, play with it, start protecting yourself from potential bad times. Start today. We thank them for their support. You're listening to Cinema Jaw, the greatest movies podcast ever, recorded on location at Hell's Gate in Chicago. My name is Matt Kay, and with me is... Rye the Movie Guy. And usually, sitting in with us is producer Pat, but there's a story about that, Matt Kay. Right. Well, he chickened out, is the story. We were at Hell's Gate, which is sort of an annual tradition, and just couldn't hang. No. I mean, the offer was out there. We said, Pat, you know, there's Murder Road. There's dragons. There's all this cool stuff. And when push came to shove, no producer Pat couldn't get in the car. No. He just didn't have what it took. We had to make the trek all the way out here to Lockport, just me and Matt. So thanks, producer Pat, for that. I had to put up with Matt Kay for a drive, which is never fun. You poor thing. No buffer. (laughs) Well, this week on Cinema Jaw, Matt, it's Halloween month. We're still celebrating all of the horror of October. But this time we're focusing on... Horror movie heroes. Mm, I like it, man. And and we, we sort of avoided the final girls, or at least I did. Going for more of the um, the true heroes, the people that step up and fight the evil. Exactly. It's going to be interesting because, yeah, usually you, you, you focus on, you know, the villains, the right. slashers. Right, Freddy, Jason, but Michael Myers. But thinking, Jawheads, top five horror movie heroes helping us with this list, Matt Kay. Yes. An annual tradition. As I said on the drive out here, he is now probably one of the most prolific Cinema Jaw guests in the history of this podcast. He has been on at least eight times, at least. At least. This could be his 10th. we got to count that, maybe uh, get a fact in the middle of the show or something. Yes, that's right. So John LaFlamboy, the proprietor of the amazing Hell's Gate here in Lockport, Illinois, as well as the Statesville Haunted Prison uh, is with us. Yes, can't wait to talk to John. It was funny, too. Uh, we got a story about uh, Zombieland um, and John LaFlamboy. I can't wait to tell that story on the podcast. Matt, besides that, we're going eye for an eye on Paradise Hills. And we have a review of Zombieland Double Tap. Nice. And since we are reviewing Zombieland Double Tap, I thought this is a good time for you to take John on in land movie trivia. Think of movies that have land in the title. Okay. If it's a land before time question, I'm going to nail it. Nice. I watched that crappy movie We also got some Hollywood headlines for you. And before we bring in John, we are celebrating Jamie Lee Curtis all month of October. So let's start there, Matt, with yes, the Jamie Lee Curtis fan. That's right. In honor of Jamie Lee Curtis Month here on Cinema Jaw, we bring you this bit of JLC trivia. Several of her roles make reference to roles played by her famous parents, Tony Curtis and Janet Lee. She appeared on television series Operation Petticoat based on the movie that starred her father, Tony Curtis. While on hiatus from that show, she was cast in Halloween, in which Detective Sam Loomis was named after a character from Psycho, which had starred her mother, Janet Leigh. Also, her father imitated Cary Grant's voice for his role in Some Like It Hot and worked with Grant himself in Operation Petticoat. Grant's birth name, Archie Leach, was used as the name for John Cleese's character in A Fish Called Wanda. It wow. all comes full circle, right? My head hurts. It's about to explode, I, I think, after that fact. That's some meta stuff right there, man. Amazing. Yep. I love celebrating Jamie Lee Curtis. And in fact, we threw a poll question out that we will get the results of. And I'll ask you guys, and I want to get John's idea, his vote on this poll question as well. So that brings us to our guest, Matt Kay. Without further ado, like I said, very, very prolific Cinema Jaw guest in the history of our podcast. Always a pleasure to come out here. He runs not only... Hell's Gate, but also, as you mentioned, Matt, Statesville Haunted Prison, some of the best haunted houses in the country. John LaFlamboy, welcome back to Cinema Jaw. 
Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. It is very, very good to be back, and uh, I appreciate uh, the beer that you always have ready for me. For sure. It's one of the most Cheers. important pieces of uh, podcasting equipment. Cheers, Fred. Yes. <laughs> so let me start with this very funny story of Zombieland screening. Because I thought yeah. this was quite ironic. <laughs> we were at uh, Zombieland screening just this past Tuesday. And me and Matt are, are getting ready to review. You know, we're going to know this is going to be our review of the week. So we're sitting in the back of the theater waiting for the, uh, the movie to play. And out of nowhere, a voice comes out. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm always annoyed by these people that start talking at the be beginning of the too. movie. <laughs> and, I, and as I hear the voice, I hear something about... Who's ready for some zombies? I'm like, that sounds like. And I look up. Sure enough, <laughs> <laughs> there's our guest this week. Hype in the movie. Hype in the movie. Hype in the movie. I am the annoying voice in the front of the theater. And he ended up getting the entire theater to start chanting zombies, <laughs> zombies. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, that was uh, that was a weird night for me. Uh, so, little backstory. Um, ten years ago. When Zombieland was first released, yeah, we were contacted by the promoters of the film, okay, and they had asked us to come as zombies, dressed up, and walk Woody and Jesse down the red carpet. No way uh, for the Chicago premiere of Zombieland. Uh, wow! And we did all this right there on Illinois Street, uh, that theater, the AMC. Right yeah, by, sure, uh, we yeah, go to it's it. A it really often. great location, mm -hmm. and I had like thirty zombies in full gear. The zombie army bus. It's a party. Woody is, is classically late because he's definitely getting high in the hotel room. <laughs> and we're all in front, meandering around. I am the Hunter S. Thompson zombie. I've okay. seen that character of yours. And so I walk Woody and Jesse down the aisle. And I wouldn't break character. I stayed as Hunter S. Thompson zombie and introduced them and introduced the movie. I think Woody was a little bit more freaked out than anything. <laughs> uh, but we did that 10 years ago and had a really great time. A great is, time with the cast, great time awesome. with, with, with the, the crowd. I mean, sure. it's a zombie crowd, right? So they call us 10 years later. And they're like, no celebrities, no red carpet. But we have all the tickets in the world for Zombie Army. Because if we want to fill a theater with people, we want your people in it. And then we did a promotion. And anyone who came to Hell's Gate last weekend, we were giving tickets away, too. Nice. Oh, so nice. It was a really great thing. So it was your yeah. audience, too. So that audience was a bunch of people we gave free tickets to at the Haunted House. You, you know, go to Hell's Gate, get free tickets to screenings. Uh, and then there was like, yeah, 40 Zombie Army members. Yeah, and all the all, green coats. We all roll up. And, and <laughs> it's great and casual. And I don't have to do anything yeah. in this one. I just have to watch the movie. I'm like, what a great gig. I just got to show up and watch a movie. So I'm getting a drink, go inside. And then this lady comes up to me. She goes, all right, so we're going to have you introduce the film in about 10 minutes. Oh, no. And I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what, lady? They what? didn't tell you anything about this? What did you say, lady? And then I thought I was being punked. Like, I thought it was a joke. Because I was real clear, I'm not introducing this movie. <laughs> I'm just going to watch it. It's my night off. And she's like, yeah, so... Everybody back in L.A. said that you're the greatest one to introduce this. I'm like, lady, that was a decade ago. You don't know me. And I'm trying to like get out of it, but in a fun way. Uh, and then I realized they literally had no plan. Uh, there was no structure. Yeah. And this, this wonderful girl that had a tiny little mousy voice was really depending on a jerk like me to be big and loud and get people's attention. And I'm throw like, some T-shirts. I'm like, all right, what do, you, what do you got for me? I'm like, what do you want me to introduce? Like, uh, oh, we don't know. Just tell them the name of the movie, I guess. I'm like, they know the name of the damn movie, lady. I'm like, anything? You got anything? She's like, T-shirts? I'm like, okay, uh, I'll do my best. So, <laughs> yes, that was an impromptu on the fly, making it up as I went along. I almost killed a girl with one of those T-shirts, by the I way. I saw that, the one up in the top row. You're exactly right. Yeah, yes. I was sitting very close to that. She girl. almost died. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't know how it's possible, but it seems everybody Flanders. in the theater got T-shirts except me and Matt Kay. I, somehow he missed us. Yeah, oh, it's not somehow. Know. It's intentional. Jesus, yeah, come Ryan, on, Ryan, come on. They saw you, and they're like, <laughs> don't everybody but that guy. I was so happy there was an actual zombie chant going on before the movie. That was my favorite part. <laughs> I'm like, I need something. <laughs> like, I need it backup. worked. It, it totally worked. worked. If I could turn the audience into my backup, this will all go swimmingly. <laughs> we, I was sitting next to the learners who are critics and have been on the show. And, uh, Did they get in on it? Zombies. And they're, they're just laughing with it all. And I said, that's our guest this week. They're like, oh, it's going to be a doozy. <laughs>
It was it awesome, was awesome, man. It's so weird bumping into you like oh, that. Oh, when I saw you guys up after the movie, I was so tickled. Oh, my <laughs> God. Is, how is this? The universe has put us together <laughs> days before the podcast. We're in the same movie watching the same premiere. Yeah, it's I awesome. That was really great. So it's been a year. Tell us what's new here at Hell's Gate. Oh, my God. What isn't new here at Hell's Gate? I've been busy, uh, and the whole zombie army's been busy. We have We showed up out here January 7th and started. Jeez, that's uh, early. We got at, yeah. Snow on the ground. Last year, uh, you guys might not know this because you came early in the season, but last year we won uh, number one haunted house in Chicagoland from Haunted House Chicago. I I think that's a given. It should damn well be a given. Yeah, it's it's an honor, though. That's great. It's a great honor. And they're they're the most highly respected reviewers in all of Chicago is Haunted House Chicago. Uh, If you guys need to know where to go or get information for haunted houses. So we had this really great year last year with all the reviewers. That's awesome. Uh, And and so what that typically means is we're going to have real big audiences the next year. And I'm a fan of haunted houses. I'm a little addicted to this. (laughs) So my thought was, oh, they're coming now. I better come up with some really cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, so we spent all year. We have the what the new, new stuff on the trails, new stuff in the graveyard. Uh, we have the new study. You know where you go in and get split up into your small groups. Yeah. Brand new. Yeah. Right. Anywhere I could tweak it. And teddy make, bears. Oh, the teddy bears. Yeah. And that's in the strobe light. It's freakiest. Yeah. Woo. And and it's just silly stuffed animals. But if you do it right, you light it right, and you put the right actor in there, it works out. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a lot of throughout the entire house was. New stuff everywhere. New stuff everywhere. So many details. That's, that's one of the things like I think a lot of the audience miss out on because y- your your knee jerk reaction is to like look down and yeah. sort of cower. You got to look around. Oh, and, and, and then 50, 50 feet away, you got a, a girl twirling fire. She had two girls twirling fire. fire. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. <laughs> Fireballs going off. So even when you're standing right outside the doors of Hell's Gate, yes. sort of waiting in air quotes, it's, you're you're being entertained oh, completely. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, awesome. yeah, we got we're, we're firm on that. If we ever stop you and then we're always stopping you to serve you. Right. You know, just I mean, customers don't usually understand that. Exactly. If I'm ever falling upside down, like I have to I have to complete that entire set so you're standing inside a show. And not just a line. So a lot of the actors, obviously, how many actors total? About 130 to 150 on a nightly basis. So the ones that do the uh, acrobatic stuff and they got to either be on the wire. Yes. uh, Are those hired beforehand? Because those seem almost like a specialty no. Quote unquote actor as, the, the spe- as opposed to somebody maybe just popping out of the. Uh, you know, the weight can go up to like 300 pounds. Okay. We are using the same fly rigs and harnesses as Cirque du Soleil. So we do not save money on our safety. No, we yeah. We spend all the money on the safety. So as much as I joke around about the height, weight, and courage, then we train them. You know, and I have a professional rigger here that works with them to train them. Uh, but it is the coveted position. I mean, the girls really? around here fight for those spots. They want to be up there on the wire. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. it's fun just like. I mean, some of them go right over your head. And yeah. it's guaranteed scares every time. Oh, yeah. I mean, all night they're watching groups just hit the floor. Right. So there's a great satisfaction. Uh, and, and, and you know what I will say? There's, you know, there's, there's this kind of sexist attitude in haunted houses around the country where only big guys are scary. And, that is total BS. I stand against that as firm as I possibly can. And I use Hell's Gate as an example. Yeah. That my icon characters, my scariest characters here are the two twins mm-hmm. and the two 12 year old girls. Now, in real life, they're, you know, 21, 18, whatever. Um, but tiny little five foot one, 100 pound girls are terrifying yeah. <laughs> if the designer of the haunted house is empowering them, yep. putting them in a position to, to, to be strong and, and be able to perform. And I mean, same thing with Buna. You know, Buna is my roaming, my roaming witch in the woods that is always, she's hilarious, mm-hmm. uh, telling stories oh, and yeah, jokes. Oh, so yes, we, we ran into her. And yep. she also knows how to scare the hell out of you, too. Like, uh, this is not a business for men. That's just such a bull crap kind of attitude. What, what I, I loved was uh, in the room with the, the twins, and I know what's going to happen, that they're going to jump out in front of the room. But the uh, there was a family to the right of me <laughs> that had, like, a, a teenage daughter. The I mean, First time oh, through whole, the show, yes. Yeah. The whole family ducked down screaming. <laughs> I was like, yeah. It works every Here we time. go. You know what got me this year? <laughs> What's there, that? there was this. Uh, speaking of women, there was this girl in the woods who I saw from a mile away. She she's crawling, um, you know, on all fours. Oh yeah. And, and, but but one leg will go up almost like a spider. Oh, you I, know? Call it, I call it crazy hips. And, and then all of a sudden she just comes at me like like real uh-huh. fast. I was not <laughs> expecting that, dude. It, it got me. It's really unnatural. It's right? very unnatural. Her physicality was just yeah. so we d- talented. We, s- we start all of our training with movement training. I don't let the kids even go in the haunted house until we do movement training. Uh, because movement 
is where you kind of really do that. It, it's the quickest way uh, to a cheat, uh, to convince an audience member that this is not human or it's better than human. Uh, if you move, if you move your center around, your tempo around, uh, your levels around, then you trick the audience into thinking, no, something about that is just wrong. Uh, yeah. And like my girlfriend hates when zombies crawl at her. It's the tiniest Who little doesn't? thing. But when a zombie crawls at her feet, she just goes ballistic and she works in the haunted house world and she can't do it. So yes, movements, uh, coaching those different levels, different ways to have an actor move changes the game. It does. Well done. Yes. Thanks, man. And I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell her because she does a kick-ass job every night. She does. How, how about the lighting in here? I, I made a joke that I was going to ask you how many lights are used throughout. <laughs> you know, Good. There's just so much Don't lighting. <laughs> but, but it is an art form to light it correctly because the lighting, we were just commenting it when we got our photo taken by the, uh, the chapel mm-hmm. when, when you come out, how cool the lighting looks. And we looked at the photo, we're like, man, it just looks awesome. Right. But throughout the entire house, the lighting. So is that the process, like, going in? Who does the lighting? And, and do you go in and look at it and say, ah, this doesn't look right, it needs to be bright? Brighter, darker, yeah. more strobe. I mean, haunted house lighting is real tricky. Um, you want people to see the work you've done. Right. But you cannot overlight it. If you overlight it, it's just not scary. You know, so let go of your pride. Um, and, and a lot of lighting we use here is to move you. So where a light is, that's where you it's go. kind of a psychological effect to, to make you go there. Uh, that keeps people moving at the proper time. Mm-hmm. It's part of the machine design, right? Sure. So I'll design a room. And then I'll, I'll bring in my lighting people and I'll explain my idea for the lighting. And then lucky for me, they are so much smarter than I am. Uh, so they take my ideas, like what I need conceptually uh, or, or, or functionally. And then they just create magic, you know. So I've got some really great guys here. I, you know, Beaker is here. Mike Gimlick is here. You know, Chaka, just really smart guys that know how to use the equipment and make my ideas just look beautiful. It's awesome. They've done it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's... They're great. And I noticed the grounds are expanding. Uh, we came out, and Matt's like, whoa, five-minute escape room, or what is it? Something like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, back, I yeah. could tell Matt wanted to go in before <laughs> we did this podcast. <laughs> I did. Yeah. It would have only taken five minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Teresa Walker, one of the Zombie Army members. She wanted to go out on her own and create a five-minute escape room, and we gave her the space to do it, and Zombie Army helped her out to get it done, and it's really great. It's really a fun, and such a fun little thing to do after a haunted house. And we are right. We're is all, it creepy? I didn't get to go in. It is creepy. Okay, it's good. creepy, absolutely. It's fun. And a little scary, too, in there. And and it's just a great, you know, we're trying to create a great night out. We don't want to just grab your money and get you out of our parking lot. You know, we want you to have that classic fall night out. You know, being dropped off in the middle of a vacant lot by a school bus. Bonfires, beer gardens. There's a beer garden now. Yeah, That's apple awesome. cider donuts. You know, it's like, it's got that fall vibe. And then someone says, you got to walk into the woods at night. And you're like, what? I was having a beer and a donut, and things were good up until now. Uh, and then, of course, we got to break you down, put you in the show, scare the Jesus out of you. And then afterwards, it's the same thing, though. We want you to play that room escape, play the carnival games, have Just hot food dog, trucks, yeah. hang out by the bonfires, and, and share. Mm-hmm. You know, share with your friends the experience you just had. Talk about it like we are now. Right. I agree. I mean, now that we've been doing this for so many years in a row, I actually don't feel it's fall until I've come to Hell's Gate. Oh, that's this, great. Is, this is exactly what you're talking about. It's a fall night, and now I'm like, yes, this is the season. I know, dude. Yeah, it feels good, too. <laughs> great. It feels great. Um, you always, on the podcast, preach come out on thursday nights and yeah. this is a thursday night that we're recording it and i agree i could see that it's a it's a thinner crowd so it's better yep. for the audience actually going through the house the actors get to pay a little bit more attention to each group yeah yeah, yeah. and we it's take awesome. more time you know so it's like we we've got you know we're splitting groups up in groups of three mm-hmm. right now so you're going in in a group of three there's 150 actors uh and there's awesome. a minute and a half between each group on a thursday mm-hmm this is our favorite. We're yeah. not making money tonight. <laughs> Tonight's not about making money. No. Tonight's about doing a great show and really getting to cater to those haunted house fans that know better than to show up on a busy Saturday. Right. The people that know better to show up on a Thursday where the line is small in the tent and you get personalized attention. And Zombie Army loves personalized attention. I mean, <laughs> we do this because we enjoy this. Sure. You know? So, yeah, I love the Thursday night crowd. I, I love the show on Thursday nights. I have a blast here on Thursdays. All right, so for the Jawheads in the Midwest, the Chicagoland area that want to come out to Hell's Gate, where's the best place to go online for tickets and everything they need to know? Oh, it's real easy. Hellsgate.com. Hellsgate.com. Uh, also, though, 
honestly, for listeners out there, uh, I've said I say this all the time. I'm a fan of haunted houses. I love haunted houses, and I have since I was a kid. So, I'm a little bit of a weird uh, owner of haunted houses in the way that I love giving around giving out discounts. So I'm always giving coupons. It does not matter if it's my busiest night of the year. I'm still going to give discounts to those people that need a discount to come see a show. Not everyone can afford a $30 ticket. So go to my Facebook. Go to my Instagram. I am always giving out discounts. Uh, Use those coupons, man. Uh, They're there for a reason. I want people to have them. I want you to come see my show cheaper. And uh, you know what? That brings up one last little detail. If you find the key hidden in the key room at, at Hell's Gate, your ticket is free. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, we have about, on average, three to five people that find the key nightly. Find the key, and your ticket is free. There you go. That's awesome. That is fun. Uh, so John is sitting in on this entire job. We usually like to end these guest interviews with a silly cinema cue about the theme of the month, with it, which is Jamie Lee Curtis. And last week on the podcast, we were talking to Elliot Bambro from Chicago's Best, and we were talking about the best role of Jamie Lee Curtis. So we threw this poll question out, and I want to see where you guys both fit in. Okay. Take out Halloween movies. Yes. What is Jamie Lee Curtis's best movie? And the choices we gave you in the poll question were True Lies. Done. A Fish Called Wanda, Trading Places, or Other. You can write one in. Or you can write one in. Where would you cast your vote, John? I mean, before you asked the question, before I'm sorry, before you gave me the multiple choice, I was at True Lies. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I was at True Lies. I love her in True Lies. And maybe it was the age I saw the movie, too, like Hot Mom uh, in <laughs> True Lies. Uh, I love her in True Lies. And, and it's tough, though, because Fish Called Wanda, I think, is one of the greatest movies ever made, uh, one of the greatest comedies ever made. She was perfect in that, too. But I'm going to go with True Lies. True Lies. All right. Well, how about you, Matt? Uh, True Lies is awesome. And, and, and I cannot... Uh you know, ding you for that pick. But I am just a huge fan of A Fish Called Wanda. Yeah. I love it. Totally. And she's she's amazing in it. Kevin Klein's amazing in it. The whole cast is amazing. The guys from Monty Python, love it. I love Trading Places. I love Fish Called Wanda, but I'm with John on this one. I, I casted my vote, and I ended up clicking for True, you're true a tr- Lies. You're a True Lies <laughs> I remember loving that movie so much. So much. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was just and so she, much fun. And she was so good. Exactly. She was funny. She was sexy. She was an action star. That tango dance they did. What was she in a red dress? I mean, this is tough coming well, back. Well, she, she gets much down younger. to much less than a red dress. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I know what John's going to watch later tonight. <laughs> going home and watch True Lies. Well, I ain't going to hide it. I ain't ashamed. We are going to have the results of that poll question in the uh, break of the show. Sound good, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, Brings us to Eye for an Eye, Interested or Ignore, and the new movie is called Paradise Hills. On an isolated island, Uma wakes up to find herself at Paradise Hills, a facility where high-class families send their daughters to become perfect versions of themselves. The faculty is run by a mysterious duchess and includes treatments such as vocal lessons, beauty treatments, gymnastics, and restricted diets. Uma soon realizes that lurking behind all this beauty is a sinister secret. The film stars Emma Roberts, Mila Jonovich, and Aquafina. The film is directed by Alice Waddington, who is making her directorial debut. Matt, we throw it over to you. I got to be honest, I didn't find much in that synopsis that did it for me, but when you said Aquafina, that sort of piqued my interest. I-, I loved The Farewell, and I think she chooses great project so based on that alone i'm going interested john i I have the exact same response as matt like you read that synopsis i'm like boring a bunch of girls walking with books on their head like that's all i saw was girls walking with perfect posture with books balanced on their head based on that synopsis and then you said aquafina and i was like oh yeah i like watching her in anything so i'll watch it for her but probably on cable give it a slight interest and that's where i fit as well i agree It, it seems like, it could be boring, but the idea that there's something sinister lurking behind it. And the cast. I like Mila Jonovich. And yeah, I where's she been? I, I, so I love her. Semi-interested as well. Yeah. Three interested for Paradise Hills. Speaking of new movies, Matt. Yes. Harrelson, Eisenberg, Stone, and Breslin are back for another all-star comedy horror romp with the undead in Zombieland Double Tap. But is this second installment a faster, stronger, more evolved zombie, or is it just a homer? Ryan and I and John loaded up our bandoliers with shotgun shells and headed to the theater to find out. I'm going 
Scott. Hey, Possum Ape. <laughs> Sorry, just you in that chair. I think I would have made a damn fine president. You would have brought a real dignity to the office. You're welcome, America. Welcome to Zombieland. Life is about more than just survival. We were a family. Dysfunctional, sure, but what family isn't? Merry Christmas! What would you like, little girl? I'd really like for you to stop calling me little girl. But do you know what I would like? I don't give a shit what you like. It felt so good to be on the move again. Oh! oh my god, I'm so sorry. Hi, I'm Columbus. Madison. This is Tallahassee. Hey, Paul Blart. Is this your dad? I forgot the seatbelt rule. Oh, so she knows the rules? I told her just a few of them. 73, and are there more? You're cute. I like it. The movie opens with the makeshift family of Tallahassee, Columbus, Wichita, and Little Rock laying waste to a horde of zombies over a jam from Metallica so they can take shelter in none other than the White House. This more or less sets the tone for a movie that promises laughs, gore, and doesn't take itself too seriously. And it delivers on all those fronts. Jesse Eisenberg as Columbus is settling into his domestic life with Emma Stone as Wichita, but she is afraid of this new level of commitment in a world of zombies. Meanwhile, Abigail Breslin's Little Rock is also getting restless with the overbearing father figure of Woody Harrelson's Tallahassee smothering her with his unique brand of fatherly love. These tensions split up our makeshift family and sets the plot in action as Little Rock goes off on her own with a hippie and the rest of the troop need to find her to make sure she's safe. Along the way, the gang meet up with a dim but sweet visco girl, Madison, who adds a little tension between Eisenberg's Columbus and Stone's Wichita, as well as many of the film's funniest character moments. Overall, as you would expect with this cast, the film is wonderfully acted. Does the movie add something new to horror, comedy, or the zombie genre at large? No, not really, but for some reason, I like it even better than the first one. It's just a good old-fashioned zomcom fun. Well-written, acted, delivered, and it's not trying to be anything other than a high-quality entry into the genre. One thing I could have used just a little bit more of is the horror. There's none. Zero. Nada. Nothing scary here. Even the gore is either funny or spectacle. I would have liked at least one or two decent jump scares and maybe just a touch of danger, but that's a minor complaint. The bottom line, Zombieland Double Tap is a fun zombie comedy to bring the family to over this Halloween weekend. Just do it. Wow. Better than the first, you would say. I liked it better. Okay. Because I, I think it balanced, it, it knows what it is. I don't want to bring down the party here, but oh, I actually felt that the jokes were a bit flat. The storyline played out so long. Like, she's, okay, we got this idea that Emma Stone, Wichita, mm -hmm. is going to be afraid of commitment. This is 10 years into their relationship, and now she's going to be afraid of commitment? Well, he, he raises the stakes on her, doesn't he? I, yes, he does. Um, but you're right. There's no gore. I mean, at least in the first one, the, the, the killing of the zombies was really highlighted. I think outside of that first one over the Metallica music, which was one of my favorite parts, there was none of that throughout the rest of the movie. And I couldn't stand the third act when they finally get to Babylon. I hated that the way this movie ended at Babylon with them trading in their guns, melting them down, and then having this big zombie jump. At oh, the I liked end. it. I, I didn't liked it. like that part at all. John, where do you sit on this? Uh, so, I, I mean, I, I go into sequels thinking, all right, I'm going to struggle through this. Uh, I'm usually not a big fan of sequels, especially horror movie sequels. I always, yeah. They never hold up. No. It's rare. Very rarely. It's yeah. rare that they hold up, I should say. And I watched the original Zombieland the night before I went, just to freshen up. Hadn't seen it in years. Yeah. I truly believe, this is the first time in a long time, I left the theater saying the sequel was better than the original. Wow. I'm with you. And, and I think it's the writing. I thought, and, 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 and this is my theater background, I guess, jumping in here. I love the relationships in this one. I, I love that it was more than just watching a bunch of one-liners and people killing zombies for, for an hour and a half. I love that there were stakes. And I thought the comedy writing, especially in the character Madison, was, she was great. to perfection yeah. to write a character that is that fluffy and soft and annoying and yet so likable the entire movie. And you're right, she had a complexity with the other relationships. Uh, she had a great through line through the entire movie. I loved her. Uh, and, and, and I was thrilled with how they brought in these other characters and didn't spend too much time on some. You know, some, without me, you know, blowing it for people who haven't seen it yet. But some characters come in and they leave quite quickly. Uh, and, and I was quite fond of that. They, they, they moved uh, the characters forward. They moved the urgency forward. I was laughing through the entire thing. I thought the tact of callbacks 
was also uh, quite 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 well executed. Yeah, uh, I because agree. Because they didn't try to hammer it over your head or spoon feed you. It was just kind of a throwaway, like. Thank God for rednecks. They, they and, and even, it was just such a beautiful callback to the original. <laughs> they even sort of uh, make that part of the gag, like you got to find a new line and stuff yes, like that. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, like that was so it was very 2009. Self-aware. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was self-aware. And they were a little campy sometimes, a little mad sometimes. But, but not but over the top. But I thought all of it worked. Yeah, yeah not all of the time. It was a nice balanced It was blend. because it starts with the narration with Jesse Eisenberg but more or less breaking the fourth wall as, as the first one did as well. Yeah. And it just comes out like, hey, it's been 10 years. And I thought, oh, it's going to be too much jokey of the right. callbacks. But it, I thought the balance there was good. But you brought up Madison. And that's a, a tricky balance where you have a character that's being annoying in a comedy sense. Yeah. But I felt her a couple of times actually annoying. I actually was well, annoyed by that was the goal. That was I know, the goal. but I, you're supposed to be laughing. And a, a couple of times, like, oh, my God, enough already. Except for her Uber joke That in was the so car. great. That Uber was joke awesome. was awesome, was it not? Yes. It really was. Well, just how she reacted when she saw them again. Yes. After being split up and like, I missed you. It was like, I just, what a great character. Because clearly she's a vehicle. You know, they're, they're, they're putting her in there so that she could activate this relationship, be a catalyst for that relationship. Usually those characters are kind of shallow and empty because they're just there for a purpose right. as a tool to move things forward. But yet but somehow, I cared. Yeah. I was really excited. I was uh, glad she to, came to back. To follow her in storyline. I really was. And, and, and more so than the ones I saw in the trailers that I thought I was going to want to care about those characters. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I really thought the writing was just spot on. I thought the directing was fantastic. I agree. There weren't very scary moments, but I did not go to see Zombieland for scary moments. I went there to laugh and see some fun zombie kills. Same, same. I, I, I just wanted one or two. Sure, I mean, I agree. Yeah. Just one, maybe. Come on, yeah. give us a little bit of a scare. Like I, was at, I was at least scared of the first one when the girl in 406 yeah. turned. Yeah. It made you scared and uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have a lot of that. There right. was almost yeah. none of that. I agree. I agree. There's a moment in this movie where two characters uh, pop up that actually mirror or are just alike. Uh, yeah. Jesse I, Eisenberg. Well, so what did you Willie think Harrelson. of that sequence? So I was going to ask you. For me, it worked because they didn't linger on that for too long. Yeah. It was a good gag, it was a funny joke, and it was all wrapped up in about. 10 minutes of screen time. Yep. They didn't linger on it where it went for a half hour. No. They got to the point where right. they laughed with it, and I think they ended it in enough time where I it went out on a high note. And that's what I appreciated. Like, when they came in, I'm like, oh, boy. We're going to do this could for go, us in yeah. the movie. And then the way they wrote it, I'm like, that was awesome. <laughs> like, right. I was just they're giggling to myself. And, and oh, my God, Reno, Nevada. Hello. <laughs> for real. Yeah, Reno, no, Nevada I, is played by... Rosario Dawson? Yes. Yeah. And she's well awesome. She is Beautiful. awesome. And I, yeah, And I, I can't remember the Grindhouse picture she was in, but I need to look into it because it looks Planet like... Planet Terror. It looked like she was wearing the same leopard print that oh, I saw her wear in that movie. So that's just a, like a little horn nugget in the back of my head I need to look up one day. Yeah. Because there were lots of these little Easter eggs throughout the whole movie. You know, things I saw that I was like, oh, that's great. You mm-hmm. know, little tiny subtle moves. And I liked that they were subtle. Yeah, the the whole movie's great, man. I mean, I like the fact that they were in the White House. Nixon Nixon's gun that was given to him by Elvis, <laughs> by Elvis. Co- comes into the story. <laughs> the uh, Great Buffalo Run. I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you. I think I there loved was it. there was clever writing. I think you're you're sort of uh, not giving yeah, it well, enough credit. I, I I really was let down for me with the whole Babylon thing, and I didn't like I liked it. You don't what? like hippies, huh? Yeah. Well, I didn't like the idea that uh, Woody Harrelson was so over the top with hating the hippies, and yeah. and, and you know he was just. <laughs> just ridiculous with the with the thing this is a man who's driven to twinkies man I mean, <laughs> he's a singular focus kind of guy and and i wanted i think having watched the original zombie land where it, it more or less ends in the uh, the big carnival uh, shootout right. and you got all this stuff going on i like that ending and i think this one was just i don't know it just was flat for me hmm. that I for thought, me the ending was flat i thought the ending was pretty good and i really enjoyed the new types of zombies Okay. I thought that, like, as a zombie fan, mm-hmm. zombie army, I love the homers, <laughs> yes. uh, the ninjas. We uh, didn't get a ninja, though. What's that? We didn't get the they ninja. They got the ninja came underneath them, but bit her shoe. That we- was a ninja that creeped up on her and bit her shoe. Oh, okay. When the dolts, right, they were called dolts. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least some of the guys called them dolts. 
uh, T T eight hundred yeah, or something T like that. Yeah, like those guys when they were coming, the ninja snuck underneath and bit her in the shoe. Right. Uh, and then there was one more. I can't remember the one the more. Hawkings. The Hawkings. Yeah. Ooh, yeah yes. Stephen Hawking. So like, <laughs> I enjoyed them coming up with new types of zombies that for ten years evolution has happened as well. Yeah. And that was another part of the writing that I just really got a kick out of. And I was like, oh, is that going to be a Homer or a Hawking? Like <laughs> that part became fun for me, and especially without blowing it, but somewhere near that buffalo run with that last homer <laughs> and the butterfly was i was just tickled that that was really well put together. i i agree man i like this a lot um anything else other highlights here matt for you uh i would like to highlight how the the rules so eisenberg's character has these rules that he uh, refers to you know double tap uh cardio etc cetera, etc cetera. how they're integrated into the story both uh you know plot wise and visually You'll see the letters right. like like on the roadside. They did this in the first movie, but they were just sort of titles that didn't really like feel like they were physically present. Sure. Yeah. Now they're actually like part of the scenery. They did that really well, and sometimes they're even animated to like you know put a little emphasis on a joke or something. I thought that was really clever. Uh, the other joke I wanted to mention to highlight was the minivan joke, which they couldn't <laughs> seem to get rid of the minivan. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> and and finally, he just has to destroy the thing, yeah. right, at some point, <laughs> because you just can't keep getting in the damn mini minivan. That was good. That was good. Uh, how about a movie poster quote, Matt? I got one. It's kind of weak. L let's hear what you guys think. Just when you thought zombies were dead. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we mine was better. Uh, mine was when uh, now we just had a nice healthy discussion, so I feel bad about mine. But I was being harsh on it. But mine was <laughs> rule number fifty-six: if you're waiting ten years to make a sequel, make it better. Oh, yeah, there you go. Go. Hardcore, there you go. hardcore. There you go. How many jaws? We're on a four jaw scale here, Matt. How many jaws? I, maybe I'm going a little high on this one, but I thought it was a three jaw movie. This is it, it's solid. It's well acted. All star cast. It's funny. There's a cameo at the end over the credits that will have you leaving the theater with just a ear to ear smile. Yes, that was a high note, and we don't want to spoil that for the Jawheads. How many? How many Jaws? You know what? For for a comedy horror and a night out in October, going to a movie, I'm going four. Nice. I love it. It was. Yeah. I had as much fun watching this movie as I've had in a long time in a theater. And it was a lot of fun. It was. And and. What are you going? Two and a half jobs. Jeez, God, Sli you're a joke. <laughs> Come up on that. <laughs> Madison, <laughs> Madison would be so disappointed in your pessimism. <laughs> oh my goodness. Madison. If she was here, we, we would we would be so annoyed. Two and a half jobs from Ride the Movie Guy. I would be thrilled too. Right. Just, Four I, I like from John. Brightens up the room. Three from Matt K. Even this curmudgeon over here. <laughs> <laughs> you are wearing her color, right? Yes, now. I am. <laughs> if you have seen Zombie, that's more of a salmon, though, really. <laughs> and you have Twitter pulled up. Shoot us a tweet at Cinema Jaw, or you can always write us an email feedback at cinemajaw.com there are all heroes right in zombie land that's our topic this week you they can are. really classify every character in zombie land as a hero but we're concentrating on the top five of all time difficult list for you to come up with john or did no i mean knock it was them right away i mean it, 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 putting them in order was tricky but yeah no and and of course mine are probably going to be skewed more towards horror comedy um because that's okay. that's, that's where i live you that's, know? that's uh, my... i love the horror comedy world same here you're getting us kicked off at number five who do you got sitting there number five number five okay so this was tricky because it was you know looking at all of these icons uh and 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 like how do i rank these beautiful people i was a little bit tripping over myself with this one because my feeling was, is it a horror or is it a sci-fi? I got a lot of crap for that last week. So. But if it's, if it's terrifying and a sci-fi, isn't it a horror sci-fi? I would agree with you. And yeah. so if I'm looking for heroes, if I'm looking for badasses, oh. I'm looking at Sigourney Reaver. Yes. yes. Uh, Ripley at number five. Has wow. to, she that's, has to make the list. Yes. That's, that's um, interesting. And she's only at number five because I'm a horror comedy fan. Um, <laughs> not because she deserves to be there. She's amazing. There's no doubt. And, and by the way, the original Alien, absolutely horror, no argument. Ah. Second one, action. Action, yeah. right. But first one, horror. Totally horror. agree. Yeah. I'm going to go number two here, Matt, if you okay. don't mind. Let you finish up the list. Oh, please. And I actually would say my number five is it's, it's sort of horror blockbuster, summer blockbuster. And I went with Jaws being the movie. Oh, okay. But it's a horror movie. There's three guys you can go to here. But I went with uh, Chief Brody. Yeah. Played by Rob Schreider. Yeah. Who, I mean, I think the reason why it works as a hero, too, is in this sense, yes, he's he's a chief, right? But 
in this sense of trying to track down and kill a great white shark, he's like an everyday man. He's just in the boat. He's never done right. anything like this before. So we're seeing this adventure through his eyes. He's and not then, all like six pack and biceps. Right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that final sequence still to this day, uh, I think is one of the best cinematic scenes in movie history when he finally uh, is going down with the ship and shoots and, and kills the, Smile, the great Smile, you son of a bitch. Yeah. The best. Tough to argue with that choice, best, dude. Definitely the best. My number five, Chief Brody. What do you got, man? Boy, I'm glad I have some honorables because uh, you guys uh, have already pilfered from my list. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at number five, this one is yet to be revealed. I'm going with a zombie, Bub, from Day of the Dead. <laughs> Ryan hates this. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I, I'm just drawing a blank I don't know here. if you even know who yeah. Bub is. I know. Yes. He's the Bub. first thinking zombie, right? Does Bub not slay the villain at the end of the movie? Okay. All right. All right. He, his, 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 his I got to lean on John on this one. His, the, the love of his unlife uh, is murdered, and he takes his revenge and kills the murderer, and losing some of his innocence in the process because Bub is, while he is a flesh-eating ghoul, is a very innocent, fun-loving zombie. Yeah. He, he just wants to solve puzzles and learn and, and get back to some of those memories he had when he was alive. And he has to kill the, the villain at the end of Day of the Dead and watch him get torn to pieces by other zombies who are less evolved than he is. He's definitely a hero. Would, would he be a hero or would that be reactionary? You know, I think like he's it, good it, at, he, in his he core. Have, but did he have a plan? Yeah, he or did. did he, he just shoots, react? He, he shoots the gun and, well... There's a bit of reaction. It's a revenge, which maybe isn't heroic in I, and of itself. I love that we're debating the, what's inside the mind of a zombie hero. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Not too much. I just much. had to ask. <laughs> but the fact that it's the villain that gets his comeuppance is what makes Bub a hero, and he's such a likable character. I, I think that makes him heroic. And I don't think there's nearly enough love for Bub out there. So I love There that you go. Pick. It's just a number five, guys. Yeah. yeah. All right, number four. Number four, I'm going to go to just one of my all-time favorite horror comedies and i'm going with sean from sean of the dead nice <laughs> uh I, it's just absolutely one of my favorite movies and i love him as a hero because he is the unlikeliest of heroes i love how they set it up in the beginning we really show this kind of noodle of a man uh that is not aware of anything in his world uh and now he has to get people together come up with a plan save his girlfriend there and, and there's really great like heartwarming moments in all of this too his relationship with his stepdad his mother i mean and what happens to his stepdad we're coming to get you barbara <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, I mean, there's just such great stuff, and, 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 and I like it because it's not just a guy trying to escape a building. You know, he's trying to go out there and save people, rescue people. There's great relationships in this movie. I, clearly, I love good, complex relationships. And I thought for a horror comedy, there were wonderful, complex relationships, especially when his buddy gets bit. I mean, right. it was yeah. such a beautiful moment in the basement of the Winchester. <laughs> so and, and that, to uh, me, is what, what, what like solidifies him as my pick. <laughs> it was that moment down in the basement with his friend <laughs> in the Winchester when he knew his friend is dying and the zombies are up top, <laughs> and he's got to give it one. One last yep. go at That's it. That's awesome. What a, what a moment. I got to rewatch Shaun of the Dead. Yes. I haven't seen it in, do it God, up. I don't know. It's been a long time. Oh, Six, seven one, years. I Still feel like best. when we're sitting up here and behind the scenes in the haunted house, this is our Winchester, you know? <laughs> Talking horror. You got you to gotta hang pots, a rifle you know? right up there, <laughs> yes. man. Uh, my number four, just last week we were talking um, great horror films and Elliot was talking about The Void and how it was like almost an homage to all of John Carpenter's yeah. works. And it got me thinking of John Carpenter and one of the best heroes in a John Carpenter movie, for my money anyways, is R.J. McReady, played by Kurt Russell in The Thing. That's a good one. You could have gone really with right? almost any of his his heroes. But this is such a cool Kurt Russell. I yeah. mean, maybe if you're if you're narrowing down, and maybe someday we're gonna have to do our, our top five. I'd go maybe Kurt Snake, Russell movies. Snake Plissken over this one. But, but this is up there, right? You yeah. get the cool beard. You get Kurt Russell with a flamethrower, and he has to kill the thing in different forms as it takes these, you know, shape shifting. Um, you know, all of his crew. He's got to kill the thing multiple times in multiple ways. It's just the best Kurt Russell you can have. So. It's, it's a great movie, dude. Yep. I love it. So yeah. that's my number four, R.J. McRitty. All right. That swings it back to me. And this is where I put one of, I think, the best. This could have been a number one. One of the, the only times in the movie Halloween you feel safe, at least just a little bit safe for a moment, is when Dr. Sam Loomis comes into the story. 
And he's the only one who sort of knows a little bit about Michael Myers, the backstory, what he's capable of, everything else. Didn't, don't feel safe with Laurie Strode. I don't feel safe with the police. Sure as hell don't feel safe with Michael Myers. But when Loomis is on the screen, at least I have something to cling to. Even though he's flawed and somewhat frail, he's a hero. He shoots Michael. He saves Laurie. And I love Loomis. And he's been played by some great actors, Donald Pleasance and uh, Donald Sutherland over the years. And I, I hope to see him maybe uh, portrayed again in the in the new Halloween movies. We'll see. Um, but he's up there for me. Halloween uh, horror hero. I like it. Figured it had to be on your list. Yeah. Loomis. Need to be mentioned. Into our threes we go. All right. Into my threes. And honestly, I wanted to put this number one. But that's just my own selfish little joy of this character. Uh, and I'm not going to do that because there's other people that have to be in my number one spot. But in number three, and I know this is an audio-based uh, entertainment show, but I brought a visual aid because this is how much I love this character. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jawhead's out yes. there. You can't see it. But sitting on top of my microphone is an action figure of Quint from Jaws. <laughs> Where did you get that? Uh, that's awesome. Isn't that great? Yes. We have Matt <laughs> taking a picture of this. This is going to be awesome. Yeah. We'll uh, and he Instagram. is one of my all-time favorite heroes <laughs> in a horror film uh, because of his just his drive, his ability to keep everything moving forward, uh, his amazing one-liners, uh, his song in the boat. That part's awesome. I'm drunk and I want to go home. I mean, that's... And then the shark bump in the boat. Like... He, to me, like, I can watch that movie over and over again just for his performance. Yep. And, and which I read that he was drunk for that entire performance. <laughs> oh, that was right. That was Absolutely not, that was method wasted. acting. Yeah. Um, and, but yes, he was funny. He was determined. He was a goddamn hero at the end. He was. He was not afraid yep. of that beast. So I agree. Quint from Jaws. Two mentions for, for, characters of jaws i yeah. love it and one of my favorite lines did you bring an action hero <laughs> no i did not right, one of my favorite lines that uh quint gives is when they're shooting uh the shark with those um those so that he can't go underwater what would you call those uh, the barrels the, the barrels yeah yeah and Buoys. he shoots them and they're like he's going under again he's like not with three he ain't going under. <laughs> <laughs> so sure of himself you know i actually have a print a picture somebody photographed this of Robert Shaw just riding around whatever town they filmed Jaws in on uh -huh. a bicycle, which I guess is how he got from his nice. set to <laughs> just ride around the bike. on a bicycle. His monologue about, what was it, the, oh God, I can't remember the name of the ship, right. maybe the Midway or, the, the, there was a the name of the ship that sank with all the sharks. Right. And that monologue was just horrific and, and, and to me as an actor, man, it felt like he was there. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful thing. I agree. That monologue about all those sailors just bobbing up and down waiting for rescue all night that just that still just has a knife inside my chest no what doubt about terrifying it. terrifying visage great one great one great pick at number three i agree uh swings it over to my number three and i wonder where you guys sit on this movie because i think it's if anything it's underrated and it's directed by peter jackson who doesn't usually make films that are underrated but he made Has he ever made yes, one? Yes. But he made an underrated horror film, I think. I've rewatched the movie and I have so much fun with this one. And if you're talking heroes and you're talking about one of the most beloved actors in American history in Michael J. Fox, this is where I'm going. Uh, this is not I, where I, I thought you were going. I, not, not where I thought where he was thought going, going either, going. But, but that's a great pick. Left turn. I, well, I am like going this, with yeah, the Frighteners. Frighteners. And Michael J. Fox's character in The Frighteners, he plays Frank. Uh, Bannister, who is like a former architect who has turned into a con man because he can see ghosts. And uh, he's just making money by haunting houses and, you know, devaluing houses. Right. He's, he's in cahoots with the ghosts. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. But that is until uh, people get murdered and he becomes the prime suspect of these murders when it's actually, you know, the Grim Reaper and all this other right. stuff that's going on. And so now all of a sudden he's got to go from con man to hero. And that means basically almost killing himself so that he can become a spirit to solve the crime. It's a great movie. It I is a great it's movie. It's a fun yeah. movie. I, I love, I love it. Choice. So. I, I agree. I yeah. think it's highly underrated. Outside of, of uh, Back to the Future film, this might be one of Michael J. Fox's greatest roles. Yeah. Yes. What else? The what else would you throw at me? And, and the best wallpaper I've ever seen in movies. I agree. And the the uh, a visual of those ghosts and stuff moving in the walls, the yeah. way it bulged, was so awesome. awesome. Well, that's something I've seen actually adopted in in real haunted houses, yeah. like haunt attractions. Spandex walls. Yeah. Yeah. Spandex yeah, yeah. walls. Yeah. 
I've I've been behind them as yeah. an, an well, actor. And but the yeah. audience punches you. Yes. It sucks. Yes, it That's does. That's why we don't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Well, that was my number three, Michael J. Fox in The Frighteners. What do you got sitting there, Matt? At number three, in all honesty, guys, I went Chief Brody from Jaws. I love me some Quint. Uh, I, I really do, but I went Chief Brody. So if I have to throw in an audible right here, I'm going to sub in Tangia as played by Zelda Rubinstein from the original Poltergeist. This house is clean. Oh, yeah. Well, that's fun. Just a bizarre yeah. character. <laughs> Straight, like, lady. <laughs> Straight out of left field. I mean, when you're watching this movie and, and she comes on, I'm like, I'm like, where did they find this person? She's perfect. Yep. She's just creepy and lovable enough. She's both at the same time. You believe that she can pierce the veil and, and bring Carol Ann back through. But at the same time, you kind of want to give her a hug. And that's the most quotable line from that movie is her line. Yeah. Into the light, Caroline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't look at the light. <laughs> like, basically every time she talks, because that voice was so, like, shrill and yeah, creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Great character actress. Nice pick, Matt. Thank you. That's just an audible. I like it. Into our twos we go. Two. Okay, I'm going to preface this, all right? For all you horror fans out there, I know. I know she shouldn't be number two. I know she should be number one. But like I said, I'm a horror comedy guy. But I'm going with the queen of horror, Jamie Lee Curtis. Wow. The grand dam of them all. Uh, the beast that kills monsters uh, and looks good in a red dress dancing the tango. Um, I'm fixated. Uh, she deserves all the respect in the world for one of the greatest heroes in the entire horror genre. But she's still my number two because I'm into comedy horror. Uh, absolutely love her. Love her in the old movies. Love her in the new movies. Um, I mean, this is a woman who's been literally killing the same monsters for how many decades now? So actually, we just found this out. Uh, as of the new movie in 2020, it will be the sixth decade she has been playing the character I think you're about to name. Yep. Laurie Are Strode. Are you kidding me? The sixth decade. Sixth <laughs> decade? Right, because she started in 78. Okay. So we got and the then, 70s. And then the 80s. She also played in, the, in Halloween 2. And then the 90s was H2O. Yep. Jeez. Yep. <laughs> Jeez and crackers. <laughs> How about that? Wow. That's why we're Six celebrating our yeah, like cinema Good shop. gravy. Yeah, so <laughs> I know she should be number one, but this is my top five. But all respect and love to Jamie Lee Curtis. That's great. And it actually leads nicely into my number two because I also went with an actress who had to take on the same sort of bad guys or at least group of bad guys at numerous times in okay. numerous films. But in a more modern generation, Nev Campbell as Sidney Prescott in the Scream series. And I like this character because she was... Really, why? I, I think it's a generic final girl. Oh, no, I don't think so at all. I mean, number one, she's always smarter than the ghost, ghost face, face people who are, are coming after her. Mm -hmm. But also, she's okay to get a, a little physical with them. I remember uh, like the old slasher films, it never got to the point, I didn't think, where they were actually like quote-unquote wrestling and, and, and being physical together. But in the Scream movie, she'll actually clock him over the head with the phone or give him a good kick to the face. A little oh, bit she gets more physical. so. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I like that. And then she was in Scream 1, 2, 4, you know. We hadn't seen it had a successful series since Halloween, and finally we had the Scream series. This is number two? Number two. Eh. Wow. Eh. No? Mm. Didn't do anything for anybody here. Yeah. It's okay. I've never seen more uninterested guys. I mean, of, and, of all the of all the like final girl icons you could have picked, you you chose. I went Nev Campbell. Nev Campbell. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Moving along. Yeah. Let's Boy, this along. is terrible. <laughs> is, it, is it is it to me now? <laughs> all right. Uh, let's pick this back up here, fellas. Uh, you talk about a horror hero. Here is a guy, and I, actually, I want to get this actor's name because I don't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, who who broke broke down a barrier in. 1968, we, we didn't have a lot of black heroes to choose from. Dwayne Jones okay. played Ben in the original yeah. Night of the Living Dead. Okay, yeah. sure. Here's just something we hadn't seen on the screen, really, yeah. before, yep. w w which was a, a situation that, that, that put uh, people of different races together in a survival situation, and the black guy was in charge. Yep. And even today, in, in 2019, we frankly don't have enough of that Not nearly uh, enough. Uh, uh, on no. the screen. Or, or perhaps in in real life, but uh, George Romero, part of his genius, I think, of Night of the Living Dead was highlighting some of what was going on in America at the time mm -hmm. on the screen, but doing it so subtly that it was we had to draw that that connection ourselves. It wasn't like spelled out for us on the screen in Night of the Living Dead. 
just Ben's presence uh, alluded to that enough uh, of what was going on with the civil rights movement at the time. Well, and the beauty of that, too, uh, I worked shortly on a uh, documentary on George Romero. Okay. And when he was asked about, you know, this bold choice, this bold civil rights movement to put a black man in that position, George looked up and said, I didn't. I put the best man in that position. He well was said. simply the best actor that showed up to audition. Yeah. So a lot of that, a lot of that put on, too, I really do believe came from that actor as well. Because he knew this situation. He knows the position he's in as a black man in America. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and, and God, how that movie ended was just heartbreaking. Sure. Mm. Um, but, it, but it was because of the work the actor did, I believe. Um, and, and, and at least George had given the actor all the credit, you know, when we had talked to him. Um, so I, I love your pick. Because I really do believe that actor is the one that endowed that film with all that importance. Do you, I, I don't know if, if we would hold Night of the Living Dead up to the light that we do nowadays had it not been for his performance. Right. I, see, I saw a meme the other day of, you know, that angry white dude that was always trying to, like, oh, yeah. get rid of him. You'll be boss up here, I'll face. be boss. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, there are memes right now on Facebook of this, uh, you know, of right. the black guy in charge and the white guy that can't handle it. Yep. Super so, relevant. Yes. It's Super relevant Not right just now. ahead of its time, but unfortunately, still timely. Yes. Yep. Good pick, Matt. Here we are. This is Cinema See, Jock. that's a number two, right? Our number one <laughs> picks. Our number one picks. Horror movie heroes. What do you got sitting there, John? All right. I've said it 20 times. Comedy horror guy. So I got to go with the man, the myth, the jaw. Bruce Campbell. Cannot look at this topic without putting him right there at the top. Yeah. Uh, because it's also a recurring thing. He didn't just do one movie and he was great in it. It's I, All of those films are fantastic. Um, and, and just him as an icon and, 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 a, and, and a good representation of this kind of comedy horror world, like working the conventions, out there at all these different things. Uh, he started Cinepocalypse. Cinepocalypse. I yeah. mean, yeah, it's like this is a guy that's just out there doing the work on a regular basis. And, and he is not just someone's favorite hero in a movie. He's iconic as the hero in these horror movies, horror comedy movies. He's iconic. And, and, and that's why I love him. I love Bruce Campbell. Uh, you know, Sam Raimi was my inspiration that I wanted to make movies too. You know, when I saw that first movie, I wanted to go out there and make a movie. Um, so, yeah, I'm a huge fan of Bruce Campbell, and I got to say, he is my number one with a gun. We knew this was going to come up. Matt, this is why you avoided putting Bruce Campbell I on did. your list, correct? Because yes. if not, it might have been your number it one would, as no, well. No, absolutely. And we'd all be talking Bruce Campbell. So, Ash. Yes. Um, my number one. I went with classic, and maybe it's not thought of as strictly horror, so maybe I get a little flack for that. But I do think it's it's serious thriller horror. I went with Jodie Foster, Clarice yeah. Starling, in Silence of the Lambs. You have redeemed yourself. Thank you. This yes. was a, a number one pick. Absolutely. A worthy number Absolutely, one yes. Strong character. Did she not win the Oscar she for did. this? She did. Yeah. Yes. And, all right, the ending of this movie, when she goes into the house and it, the lights are out yeah. and she cannot see, and Buffalo Bill has the night vision goggles on and he can see her, He's how terrifying this touching was. Touching her hair. And she's looking around. And it is so freaky. But yet she overcomes this and is able to actually kill Buffalo Bill. What a hero, right? And and she's the one that picked the right house to go to Buffalo Bill's house. And that moment when she actually goes into the house is so creepy because we, the audience, know what's going on. And she doesn't quite yet 100% know. She's just on to it, you know, hair lash away from knowing, ah, oh, I think this is him, but not a she, positive. She's the perfect mix of vulnerability and strength. Yeah. Because she has to give a little bit to Hannibal Lecter in order to get the intel from him in his profiling talent as a, as a psychologist and a experienced serial murderer. Um, but she has to tell him about the lambs or he won't give her that info. So we, we get to see Clarice from a very raw and vulnerable place, you know, like her childhood when she was terrified and he brings that out of her. It's just a great performance. It's one of the best ever. 
Absolutely great pick. That was my number one, Jody Foster. We got a couple of heavy hitters, Matt. I hope you don't let us down here well, with your number one. Guys, I, I'm shocked, uh, John, in all honesty, Ellen Ripley was so low on your list because I have it at number one. Yeah, I mean, uh, fair you, enough. You think about you think about final girls, I mean, and I'm saying that in air quotes. This is very much a trope in horror movies that you have a woman at the center who uh, is the last one standing between the killer winning and losing. And I could have gone Nancy from, from Elm sure. Street. That would have been maybe my second choice. But Ellen Ripley, man, I think she also kicked a door open, uh, Sigourney Weaver did, for females in general playing uh, more badasses in action movies because she reprised the role in Aliens 2, one of the greatest action movies yeah. of all time. But since it was mentioned, if I have to throw a quick honorable in, I'm going Peter Cushing as Van Helsing. One of the greatest vampire I hunters. I have not seen this. You never saw the Hammer version this. of no. Dracula? No. Christopher Lee, man. I know. I haven't <laughs> seen this. Oh, do yourself a I favor, I saw this man. pop up on lists, and I was like, i got to see this movie. I, I don't know how well it... Ha- and, and I haven't seen it admittedly maybe 15 years. It's been a while. But uh, the Hammer version of Dracula is an absolute classic, and, and Peter Cushing is, is Van Helsing. He's so such a prim and proper guy. But um, that's just an audible. Ellen Ripley, the greatest female protagonist in horror nice. bar none. I, I agree. Any other honorable mentions before we go to break here, Matt? Uh, Danny Torrance is the only one on my honorable list that hasn't been mentioned. Okay, I, you guys knocked out my honorables as well. What about Brad Pitt in Interview with the Vampire? Is he the hero? Yeah, I mm. think so. Sure. What about Gizmo and Gremlins? Yes, that's a good one. I that wanted, a really I wanted nice to put one. Gizmo on my <laughs> yeah. list. I almost made it. That's a good one. And I also liked uh, Naomi Watts in The Ring. Yeah, dude, absolutely. She yeah. was a great, so great. It, it was like a very dark version of Scooby-Doo. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. If we missed your favorite hero in a horror movie and you have Twitter pulled up, shoot us a tweet at CinemaJaw, or you can always write us an email feedback at cinemajot.com what we're going to do is take a break when we come back we have some hollywood headlines plus trivia matt versus john in land movie trivia stick with us jawheads let's all go to the lobby let's all go to the lobby hey jawheads as mentioned in the show we threw a poll out on twitter asking which jamie lee curtis movie besides halloween is your favorite and these are the results. Coming in fourth place with 7% of the vote was Other. And if you want to know what other people wrote in, check us out on Twitter and you can see some of the movies that were mentioned. The Fog comes up, a few others. At 19% in third place was Trading Places. Second place, wouldn't have guessed this, 34% of the vote went to A Fish Called Wanda, which leaves at first place with 40% of the vote True Lies is your favorite movie besides Halloween from the filmography of Jamie Lee Curtis. We continue to celebrate her in the month of October. Thanks for voting, Jawheads. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just... Hey, Jawheads. This is a quick reminder of the October riddle. If you haven't written in your answer yet, there's still a few weeks left. If only the day had one more hour, I would attend another support group and not be so sour. I mean, when you met me, I had a mental disorder. Two years later, I had a gambling problem. And later that year, I did time for killing two teens. But things got better. I returned to the stage and even became a scout leader. I have played identical twins and a lawyer defending the First Amendment. Who am I? Write us your guesses at feedback at cinemajaw.com, and one lucky jawhead is going to win some cool prizes. The chocolate bars and the candy, so let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. And we are back on Cinema Jaw, hanging out with John LaFlamboy out here at Hell's Gate in Lockport, Illinois. One thing we did not ask you about, John, was the web series. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Is it still going strong? Yes, absolutely. Days of the Living Dead uh, is a reality web series that follows Zombie Army uh, throughout our entire year. So it follows us backstage of the haunted house industry. Goes to the trade shows with us, the design process, the build, the hiring, the training, and then, of course, the production of the show. 
So if you ever want to see what's going on behind the scenes uh, at a haunted house, check out daysofthelivingdead.com. Uh, check us out on Facebook as well. And you'll see how all of this is kind of brought together. You know, we also do a lot of uh, DIYs. So if you want to learn some fun stuff, we have that on Days of Living Dead as well. Yeah, awesome. A- any filmmakers, I, I highly recommend it. It's an it's a interesting series just to see what goes into a production of any kind. Yeah. And again, if you're in the Midwest, Chicagoland area, hellsgate.com. Go there for tickets. Come out on a Thursday night, right? Oh, They're yeah. open Thursday through Sunday. It's a total blast. Absolutely, yeah. We love our Thursday customers because we really get to have fun with them. It's all great. All right. Usually we open up the fish tank here, but yeah. producer Pat was too scared to come out well, to Hell's listen, Gate. I got to come he was clean. Too, he was too afraid I, to come to Hell's I, Gate. I, I got I to just pick the veil up on the cover up here. He actually did come with us, but um, he didn't make it. He, <laughs> he's he's lost happens. in the house. That happens. Once it's, in a while. Uh, a lot of things happen out in those woods, yeah. and we just... Uh, we let nature take its course. Will you will you put up a little tombstone that says Producer Pat? No, nah, because that'd be like admitting some sort of guilt or negligence, and we're not oh, going to yeah. do that. We're That's just going to let the coyotes take care of the mess. Okay. All right. Before we get to trivia, Matt, land movie trivia, a couple of Hollywood headlines I want to get your take on it. How about this one? In a recent interview, director Doug Lyman revealed that he has completed a script for the sequel to Edge of Tomorrow mm. and is basically just waiting for Tom Cruise's schedule to clear up. I loved Edge of Tomorrow. I thought it was great, but I mean, is he still going to get stuck in a time loop? Like, how does that work? Hey, time travel sequels, if you thought horror sequels <laughs> were difficult, <laughs> I'm in. I liked it. It was great. I loved Edge of Tomorrow as well, but I agree. I don't see where the sequel comes in unless it's not necessarily the time travel element anymore. Or maybe the loop was inside of a loop. See? Oof. See? That, that would hurt my head. My head. Did you ever see this one? This is uh, where wasn't he a soldier and it kept repeating yep. itself and he was trying to figure. Yeah, it's I, gra- I loved it. It's right. Groundhog's so Day meets I. Starship Troopers. Yeah, and there yeah. we go. That's yeah. such a great way to describe it. That's what it is. I remember really enjoying it. Going, oh, that was surprisingly great. Right, surprisingly. But great. I, but I never left that movie thinking there should be a sequel. Yeah, I agree. I, <laughs> I don't know what that would be. Uh, second one here, Hollywood headlines is casting news, and it both have to do with the Batman movie that is coming out. Mm-hmm. Number one, Zoe Kravitz has been cast as Catwoman. I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I, I guess the only problem with that is it evokes um, Halle Berry's performance as Catwoman, which was not well-received. Um, maybe, I guess. I don't know. I, I'm okay with Kravitz. She's great. I love Kravitz and everything she's doing right now. I, I think she's killing it. I think she's fantastic. Uh, Big Little Lies. She's amazing in it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, she's a solid actress, so I I'd like to see what she's got. I'm also a fan of Big Little Lies, love her in there, and I really trust Matt Reeves, the guy who's directing this. I think if he sees Catwoman, and then once the news breaks, and they always put those pictures up on the internet where you see the actress and, you know, maybe, you know, what Catwoman looks like, I thought, yeah, I could see it. I think yeah. this could totally work as Catwoman. So, I'm up for it. And then also on that note, Jonah Hill who was rumored to be the Penguin in the new Batman series. Now it is uh, being reported that the studio and the actor could not come to an agreement, and he has dropped out of the project. Eh, boo-hoo. I'm okay with that, 100%. I do not I do not see anything that I would have rushed to see Jonah Hill as the Penguin. I mean, I like him a lot, but no part of me needed to see him as the Penguin, so probably a good split then i agree i think he's maybe just a little too young to play the penguin still. older guy right because yeah. danny devito was much older when he played the penguin in batman returns yeah, oswald oh, yeah. cobblepot right yeah if we're being specific yeah <laughs> and, and i'm all for danny devito coming back as the penguin <laughs> even at this age i think it would be creepy hey he's still killing it man yeah. he's uh, always sunny he's fantastic yeah. he is. some of the bring, best work he's ever done back danny it's DeVito. reminding me of the work he did on taxi it, and it, seeing him on always sunny i think he's in his prime right now. yeah i agree i, I, I honestly think he, he could play the penguin again and it would be awesome people would go up and up in arms and love it next to burgess meredith he was my favorite penguin yeah, no arguments. He might be the only other penguin, but <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> Good times. All right. It brings us to trivia. We always like to end on a, on a fun note here and play a little game of trivia. All right, let's do it. Oh As boy. we mentioned, in honor of Zombieland, we are playing land movie trivia. So think of movies with land in the title. John, you're our guest. You get to choose if you want to go first or let Matt K go first. There are steals, and if you get hung up on any question, you get one rescue. Rescue me, Ryan. I do have clues to all the questions. And they start off easy. 
I am not looking forward to losing in this competition, so I will defer to Matt. Okay. Question number one, land movie trivia. Matt, Mm -hmm. the two stars of La La Land were Ryan Gosling and this actress, who's also in Zombieland. Uh, Wichita herself, Emma Stone. One to nothing. I said they start off easy. Yeah. Question two, over to John. Jesse Eisenberg starred in another land movie that came out in 2009 and starred Kristen Stewart and Ryan Reynolds. Name it. And it took place in uh, Ryan Reynolds amusement park. Oh my God! Jesse Eisenberg, Kristen Stewart, Ryan Reynolds in amusement park. I don't think I saw it. Uh, I I don't know Adventureland. It is adventure for real. <laughs> was Absolutely. that the water park one? No, that's the way way back. That's I always get those two mixed up. Also, but Adventureland uh, takes place in like an amusement park, and they're all working at it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> one to one. Question three over to Matt K. Matt in 2015, Brad Bird put down his animation pencils and directed this live action film that starred George Clooney and was about a former boy genius. Name the movie. A former what? Boy Genius. Boy Genius? And this is Land movie trivia? Oh. Tomorrowland? That was good. That was good, dude. I cheated on my first one. (laughs) But you really are earning this. Two to one. I don't know about that. I got a witch behind the bar. (laughs) Literally, folks, he really does. (laughs) Question four over to John and the witch. Finding Neverland starred Johnny Depp as J.M. Barry, author of Peter Pan, who strikes up a relationship with Sylvia, who is the mother of four children. Which actress played Sylvia in the movie Finding Neverland? Ah, I have no idea. You said this was easy. You're a liar. Johnny Depp and who in Finding Neverland? Um... Oh God! Who's oh jeez? Uh, let's go. Uh, let's just uh, guess Emma Watson. I don't know. That is incorrect, Matthew. You got to guess on this one. Helena Bonham Carter. It's the girl from Titanic, isn't it? It is. You Kate know how I know that? Because <laughs> my witch is doing this thing. This sit like at the, the at the front of the boat. <laughs> That's a good clue. That was a really good clue. <laughs> I didn't take it, though. It is two to one, Matt K, and question five is over to him. Matt, the movie Zoolander. No, oh, man. Ben Stiller plays Derek Zoolander. Which actor played his rival? Hansel. Oh, okay. So it's a Wilson brother. Uh, and it was either, it's not, man, I always mix these guys up. Is it Luke or Owen? Um, How much time on the clock, Luke, Judge? Luke, Luke. I'm going Luke. It is Owen Wilson with his bent nose. Come on. They're, they both have the same nose. <laughs> but Owen's is pretty exciting. Wow. <laughs> two to two. Big swing in the game Ooh, here. Can I just say Owen? Steel. Needed that steal. <laughs> Question six is over to John. John, what actor starred as Rick Marshall in the 2009 big screen adaptation of The Land of the Lost? Uh, Will Ferrell. Can I just say I love the original Land of the Lost TV show? Oh. The, the special effects. It's your show. You can say that. Yeah, that's fine. It's <laughs> three to two now, John. And question seven is over to Matt K. Matt, name the Michael Bay film that starred Scarlett Johansson and Ewan McGregor. It was about wow. clones. Oh, you love this movie. You do. I remember you talking about this, trying to sell me on it. Oh, my God. Land, right? Land movie trivia. Um, and we already said Tomorrowland. That's not it. Futureland. What, what were the actors again? You got Scarlett Johansson, uh, Johansson and Ewan McGregor in a movie about clones. It's Obi-Wan and Black Widow. Directed by Michael Bay. 
Oh, I don't know it. Um, you do have a a, a rescue. The title? If you, if you, you do have a rescue if you want to take a a, a oh, lifeline. Yeah, um, give me a give me a uh, yes. A rescue me, Ryan. Your clue is. Your answer is surrounded by a body of water. Island. We'll give it to him. The island. Yes, there it was. Wow. Four to two. The game's over. John has won really this good one. Clue. <laughs> Four to two. And uh, your last question actually is over to John. Oh, come on. John. He already won. I know. Two steals out of that. John, <laughs> name the actor who directed the 2011 film In the Land of Blood and Honey. She would also go on to direct Unbroken and By the Sea. She's an actor. Yeah, name the actor turned director who directed 2011 In the Land of Blood and Honey. She also directed Angelina Jolie. Wow, slaughtered Matt K five to oh! two. <laughs> and I only cheated once with my witch. I only took one clue from her. Wow. Can I get hat, a gentleman's handshake hat, here? Hat in hand. <laughs> hat in hand, sir. Well done. If it came down to a tie, we call it a jawbreaker. This question would have been over to John. I think it's appropriate. John, better Johnny Depp Halloween costume, Sweeney Todd or Edward Scissorhands? Oh, Edward Scissorhands. It's Sweeney Todd. You're an idiot. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> but That's true. <laughs> Remember who his number two was, everyone. It was Nev freaking Campbell. <laughs> I love it. And, and I mean, l look at John with the with the yeah. Victorian era <laughs> smoking vest. That's why I had to do it. I had to do it. The, the real jawbreaker was this age of Michael Bay closest to. Do you got to guess, Matt? I have fifty eight. Lock him in at fifty eight. All right. Um, I'm gonna go. He's he's older than that. I'm gonna go sixty two. Believe it or not, 54 for Michael Bay. Oh, he, he looks guy. terrible. He I looks agree. Terrible. He does. He's really he sort of got that somebody. leather thing. He needs to get out of the sun, <laughs> use some SPF. Yeah, drink some water. <laughs> when those fireballs are going on, Michael, <laughs> just take a step back. Life's buddy. not all about explosions, Mike. <laughs> Matt, it brings us to the end of a great job. First and foremost, we got to thank our guest. Thanks for having us out here at oh, Hell's Gate. This Thanks is always a total blast. I always love when you guys show up. It's it's an annual tradition, man. We we thank you for having and us. And I get to drink beer at work. I don't get to do that. So this hey, is man, fun. We'll, we'll bring beer every year. <laughs> Thanks again, John. Uh, we also got to thank our sponsors. Yeah, thanks to Backblaze and the Chicago Podcast Co-op who help us get cool sponsors like that. If you want to support Cinema Jaw, the easiest way to do so is by leaving us a review wherever you're listening to this podcast. And while you're at it, click subscribe. One extra button helps us out a ton. Until next week, I'm Ryan the Movie Guy. I'm Matt Kay. And, and keep, keep on jawing about, about the movies. movies.